the light on. Turn the light on. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'd like to, first to thank you for the invitation to talk about this topic that we are developing here in collabor collaboration with Professor Ferrer, Professor Shears in, from Colorado. Uh, we developed this project while we were in a sabbatical leave in last year in the United States. And this topic, uh, this is the outline of the of the, the work that we developed, but along the, the, the presentation you understand better. The idea we are dealing with the problem of foot-to-body problem, where we have both the orbital and the rotational motion of the, of the system, but it's very known that this problem is unsolvable in terms of analytical solutions because we have many degrees of freedom. So a way to deal with this problem and try to find approximate solutions that are analytical and we need to consider some simplifications in the system. Uh, this is the, the research uh, model where you consider, for example, the central body as spherical. It works fine if the body is too far <coughs> to, to feel the, the gravitational effects due to the irregular shape of the central body. It, it works fine also for, for example, Earth and asteroid or Earth and uh, spacecraft. And, but uh, we also need to select the appropriate um, if you want to build this analytical uh, approximate uh, model, we also need to consider appropriate sets of uh, canonical variables in order to, to build this, uh, the solutions. And in this, in this study, we consider the hill whitaker variables for the orbital motion and the Andoaia variables for the rotational motion. Why? Because uh, following the procedure of Sassantorio and Fernandes, they, they present in the 80s, we can, using these sets of variables, we can build this set of variables here. Uh, in this set, we can see that we have relations with inclination of the orbital and rotational planes that we can refer all the system to. It's is a, kind of, a set of coordinates that will, uh, where the main angles will be referred to the total angular momentum coordinates. So on doing this, we can eliminate some angles that of the problem so that we will have the Hamiltonian system with these variables here. And on doing this, we can eliminate two degrees of freedom of the system. So we, from six, we are moving now to four degrees of, uh, four degrees of freedom. But we also need to, to, to consider more simplifications because we need to reduce the degrees of freedom of the system in order to get this analytical solution. What do we do uh, here are the Hamiltonian equations. We can consider here. Uh, this Hamiltonian, that is the, uh, the, the orbital Hamiltonian, the rotational Hamiltonian, and this uh, disturbing potential that, is the, that will describe the coupling between <coughs> the two motions. And we consider for this disturbing uh, Hamiltonian here, the, the Macbula expansion up to first order, that is, in general, is, is, it works fine for almost all the problems that uh, is our, of our interest. And we rescale the, the, f the full Hamiltonian of the product, uh, the hot, hot orbital Hamiltonian. And we rescale in terms of masses to avoid uh, uh, sensibility with, um, in the initial, uh, in, in the simulations that we consider here. Uh, this is just mathematics to, to understand what is uh, the dependence on these angles here. And the important here, this is the triaxial uh, Hamiltonian, uh, the, the, the Hamiltonian for the triaxial rigid body, and this is the Hamiltonian for an axisymmetric body, where we consider A equal to be that in A, B, C are the moments of inertia along with the, the, the lesser and the higher moments, um, moments of the body. Uh, okay, now we have the Hamiltonian. We already have a Hamiltonian in terms of uh, uh, variables that are in for, have a system with four degrees of freedom, but you also need to do something more. In that potential, we need, we can, we need to split this potential here in two parts. That is the concept of intermediary that is behind the title of, of the project. Because uh, this concept we, it means that we can split the, the, the distributing potential in two, in two terms, V0 and V tidal. And this V0 uh, will carry all the angles that are uh, connected to the moment of the problem. It means that we can reduce the system uh, and integrate it analytically uh, without dependency on the fast angles that will be here in this V tidal. So, in fact, we are in fact we are building here a model that is integrable and not de degenerated. You can check for different choices for this V zero and these two works here. Uh, this is the concept of intermediary. The main part, the, the important thing here is that this con the classical concept was 
introduced here and the natural uh, in a different concept was introduced here. The main difference between these two uh, definitions of intermediates is that this this first one uh, we require the elliptic uh, integrals to solve the problem, and you are just looking for parts of this first order perturbation. Are not uh, looking for the uh, the most approach. You are just looking for in enough parts to integrate the problem. The second one, you are able to integrate the problem in a simpler way just by using trigonometric functions, and you're trying to approach as much terms as possible. And uh, we have also hot orbital study, uh, studies about hot orbital motion that are these ones taking in consider consideration these two kinds of problems. In fact, okay. Uh, we, if we take the Hamiltonian here and we apply the first concept that is just we split into parts, we will have here the Hamiltonian, the, the intermediary, and, and we, this is the V0 and this is the V type. So as you can see here, these first terms are Q that will produce this system here. These are the equations of motion. And this term here is not able, we are not able to decoup here, but we can solve in terms of lifting integrals. That's what behind the, the idea. But we, we can also build another Hamiltonian <coughs> applying the, the very known, uh, the classical known uh, tr canonical transformation that is the elimination of the parallax. And the elimination of the parallax, the, the main concept that we need to understand, we, we, are, taking, we are taking one of these, these RQ here, we're splitting R squared and one R. That, and we perform this substitution here, and we apply a canonical transformation in terms of Lee series. And what we get is this generating function. The idea here is that we now will create another uh, intermediary model, but this generating function will like store the information about theta. That is the, th uh, the variable that we carry the information about the motion of the, of, of the body in the system. Because once we apply <laughs> the inverse transformation to recover the original variables, we can get return to original variables and we can also uh, we are able to perform short period corrections in, in the problem. On doing this, we will have this, um, this Hamiltonian. As you can see now, we, are, we have uh, we decreased, we have decreased the, the order of the of R in one in one in one in one level. And now we have the system that is this, as we define this uh, inclination, these relations in terms of those original variables, we have that this term here is a constant, so we can decoup the system and integrate in terms of simple trigonometric functions. Okay, we have now these two models, but we need to compare how precise they are when you compare with the original problem that we are trying to approach. And that is not analytical integrable. So we select here a generic problem. Uh, we just create uh, two imaginary asteroids here with these masses and this mean radius. A few, but and they are they have these parameters here for the for 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 the orbits. And the most important thing here is to look for the lines for these results because as you can see all the models are reproducing the same, the same behavior. So they are approaching these variables here. So we just need to focus on the variables where we have main differences. And the most important here, this uh, green line is the triaxial Hamiltonian, the, ham uh, the Hamiltonian for the triaxial body. There's another green but darker green here that is the model for with axis symmetry. We have the, 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 the red line here that is the model without elimination of the parallax with the concept of common intermediary, that is the older one. We also have here the, na the natural term concept of parallax in prime uh, variables without the, the short period of correction. And in black, we have the, 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 the result after performing short period corrections. And as you can see, uh, uh, we have the, these graphs are, are due to this here. In fact, uh, it's especially important to see that when we perform the short period correction using the second model, it's interesting that this model is able to recover perfectly the short period uh, behavior of the solution that is full. So in fact, it, uh, this canonical, this generative function is, is really restoring efficient, efficiently the information about the short period motion of the problem. Uh, we, we try to say, okay, uh, it works for like, it, and we have this orbit here with this eccentricity, this body is almost spherical, a, if I, uh, 
a and b 6.9 and, and c is 7 but uh, and the attitude of the the, the rigid bodies is, is around the equilibrium solution so okay but what about inclining this body and to see how precise it's going to be and we increase here the attitude of the body from 1 degree to 45.1 and we see that the short period of correction starts to deviate a little bit but the tendency is the same but we have more oscillations but if you look in the magnitude of the of this is power of phi so these are very the, the error here is very very small On, once we incline a little bit more not, 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 in fact it's completely incli inclining now the the oscillation the, the short period effect correction is still great but uh, it's not following perfect the line, but the, the tendency is the same, as you can see here. Here you start to deviate a little bit more. This, this is the, uh, the orbital angular momentum, and this is the rotational angular momentum. But still, uh, when you look to the order of these corrections, the errors are very small yet. Okay, so we define, okay, what about trying a very, very oblique body here? So we have here almost a spherical body, <coughs> Above and below results for a yeah, very flat body, rigid body. And even when we consider this modification, uh, the model, the second model especially, is able to recover the solutions. Now it means that, okay, now we have an analytical solution that is able to approach perfe almost perfectly the original model. And these are just oscillations, but if you look to the, to the magnitude, it's very small. And uh, on doing these considerations here, uh, we are using this uh, constraint here from Brown and Clements that is very important in order to guarantee the integration of the, of the problem. Okay, uh, we can also do this. Uh, what about changing the centricity of the, of the problem? Because, okay, uh, maybe you can get, uh, we can diverge, we have uh, uh, dependence on the centricity to convert the, 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 the model, the, the, the disturbing function. So, but even when we increase here for almost a spherical body, for a very flat body, even when we increase the centricity, the orbital um, angular momentum is being completely being recovered. The other variables are always being recovered in the other simulations. When you, in, when we, in, this is for one degree around the equilibrium rotation. When we tight a little bit, tight a little bit the body. The oscillation increases a little bit, but it is still very small. Just to have an idea, this is the most disturbed case when you have a very centric orbit, very tight body, very flat body, and if you look to the to the order of magnitude of the errors, they are still very small. Okay, um, my conclusions are both intermediaries present close analytic approaches of the first order of hot orbital model with axial symmetry. What is what it was the our goal in doing this study? The precision of these models, they are inside of the of our our ideas about what is good precise. But we need to perform more simulations, we test, for example, uh, uh, ranges of um, masses, ra ranges of masses, and ranges of, for example, uh, the semi-major axis of the orbit if it's far or further if it's near or further from the central body. Uh, the closer attitude of the rigid body in terms, when the more you are closer from the equilibrium rotation, you have less oscillations in the short period corrections. But despite you depart from this equilibrium uh, condition of rotation, the oscillations that you increase, they are still inside of a scopes of uh, precision. They are, these, these oscillations are Increase, but they are still uh, small when you compare with the full solution. And uh, I, we, I also have some comments here about uh, what we are doing now. We are performing some tests for different, as I mentioned, reaches of mass, that is the parameter key, different uh, shapes of orbit, like uh, distance for a semi-major semi -major axis. We also, we also have already two models with and without elimination of the parallax. Considering the flattening at the central body, we are still uh, implementing this. And we are also developing yes, the same study using now, no, uh, uh, now the Delaunay variables instead of the Hill Whitaker variables. Uh, following a procedure that was introduced by, by uh, uh, Martin Lara, 
the, in 2014 and 2013. And the idea here is that we can like shrink the, the terms in 10% of, uh, of the insights. And there's also these uh, uh, discussions uh, that are uh, ongoing. And there's also this paper here applying these models. Here already studies about relative equilibria using these solutions. And in the future, we intend to apply this for this instance here. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions?